When Daniel Kinnahan arrived at the Wain for Clash of the Clans, the first thing that he noticed was that there were no Garda to police the event. This was unnerving, because Daniel was used to having his every move shadowed by police. Not only that, the Wayan was just three months after a failed assassination attempt on his life. The press had written that the Wayan was a potential flashpoint for violence. If they knew, the police knew. So where were they? Daniel was worried that the boxing fans and their families, there to enjoy themselves, were now at risk. He made some calls to try and find out if his life was in danger. Hi. What's going on? Where are the police? Reassured that the boxing event was not a target, he tried target. He tried to ignore his concerns and went inside to show his support for Sweeney. At the same time, six getaway vehicles were arriving in the car park of the GAA club, less than a kilometer away. And a team of assassins arrived less than 50 meters from the entrance to the Regency Hotel. Irish voters are preparing to head to the ballot box in a general election that polls suggest is so close that it is likely to result in political stalemate. Sinn Féin have... The man wearing a flag cap was called Kevin Murray. He was dying from motor neuron disease and made no attempt to disguise himself. The trio, dressed as police, each carried old Romanian AKM versions of the famous AK-47 assault rifle. And there are a number of individuals who continue to present a very real threat, particularly in Northern Ireland. These dissident Republicans... Only weeks before, these distinctive weapons had been widely publicized as belonging to the IRA. So why did the team use these guns? Why not use guns that match their disguises, that were harder to trace, easier to conceal, and more practical for the job at hand? The Irish economy, which crashed in 2008, has begun to turn around, but austerity measures remain deeply unpopular. This was an important event for Daniel, and many of his friends were in the crowd. Sean McGovern was there with his best friend, David Byrne. Also, Daniel's cousin, Ian, was present. Aaron Bulger, another of Daniel's friends, was at the back. Kevin Murray and one other gained access to the Regency through the laundry entrance. They headed straight to the function room, where the weigh-in was being held. <laughs> However, unknown to the assassins, the function room had been changed at the last minute because of Welsh rugby fans who were there for the international. They were forced to ask for directions. Where's the class of the clans? The breakfast line. <laughs> Due to the recent attempt on Daniel's life, everyone was on edge. When the two assassins entered, their suspicious behavior attracted attention. A misfire saved Sean's life. Very
various fight fans and the manager of the hotel all called 999, but no one answered. They called the local police, but remarkably, no one picked up there either. The owner of the hotel had a friend in the police force who put him directly through to the Dublin division. But again, no one answered. It was like all the police in Dublin had vanished. David waited for Sean until it was clear that he wasn't coming. After terrorizing over a hundred people in the weigh-in and murdering an unarmed man in the lobby, the team took their time to search for Daniel. Show me your faces! Show me your fucking faces! Show me your faces! No, it's no. as though they knew that the police wouldn't respond. Faces! We can't find him! We can't fucking find him! He's not fucking here! Unable to find Daniel, they shot anyone associated with him. Terrified fight fans had managed to flag down a police car that had no idea what was going on. This was a terrorist-style attack in the heart of a European city. But there was no emergency response for 23 minutes. The planned getaway route would have been impossible if there had been police in pursuit. They would have been caught because it took them through Grace Park Manor. They had to wait for the electric gates to open to let them in, then navigate the speed bumps, then wait for another electric gate to open to let them out. Including the six getaway drivers, the attack was a conspiracy of at least 13 people on the ground, although there may have been more. This was just a gangland killing. Why were so many people involved? It would have been so much easier to kill Daniel before he went inside. Kevin Murray could have easily killed him on his own. Instead, a team of 13 or more people conspired to stage a terrorist-style attack in a hotel in the center of Dublin. 
the identities of almost all 12 of the hit team were known to rank and file police officers within days of the attack because they'd used their own cars as the secondary getaway vehicles. Kevin Murray, the only man who didn't have a disguise, had connections to dissident Republicans. Why give the police and media this lead? Why use the AK-47s that had been so strongly linked with the provisional IRA? Why did someone claiming to be from the continuity IRA take responsibility for the attack just three weeks before the general election? And why have there still been no convictions? If this was a conspiracy, then high-ranking members of the police must have been involved. But what could possibly have been worth them taking such a risk? Those looking for answers have made shocking links with the general election. Could all of this have been designed to change the results? I'm interested to hear the media comment that the AK-47s may well be very similar, if not of the same cargo that came in from abroad with, uh, with the provisional IRA a number of years ago. And, and it, might be very, it might be interesting to hear the Sinn Féin president comment on this. You see, that's a fact. After being blamed for the attack, Sinn Féin's steady increase in popularity at the polls faded, and Fine Gael won the election. If there is a connection between the Regency Hotel murder and Irish politics, then all of the questions raised by the attack must be answered, because our very democracy is at stake. These people, as I said yesterday, are not beyond the law. So every resource the Garda Commissioner has said to me, Avon Garda Shikona, all their capability, will be brought together in order to ensure that there is uh, law and order in this country. And I stand as a Minister of Fine Gael. I stand for law and order.